Number six then, from the first paper in the 2014 National 5 exam. What have we got? It's a line. Line question. McGregor's Burgers sells fast food. And it says this graph shows the relationship between the fat, number of grams, and the calories. A line of best fit has been drawn. Now, there's lots of points on it, but you'll notice that none of these points that are scattered about in this scatter diagram matter because it puts two in. It puts in A, and it says A represents, and make sure you get these the right way around, it's fat along calories up. It's five grams of fat and 200 calories. Point B represents a sandwich which is 25 grams of fat and 500 calories. Right, so what's the question? First bit, find the equation of the line of best fit in terms of F and C. So, line of best fit then. Well, there's two ways of getting the equation of a line. You've got two options. You can either go for y equals mx plus c, which is the appropriate one to use if you know where it cuts the vertical axis, or there's y minus b equals mx minus a, which is the appropriate one to use when you don't know where it cuts the vertical axis, when the other two points are somewhere else. So that's obviously the one I'm going to use here, well, first of all, anyway. But before I can put them in, because after all, the a and the b just stand for the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. y minus the y-coordinate, x minus the x-coordinate of any point that lies on the line. So I could, the choice of these two, a could be 5, b could be 200, or a could be 25, b could be 500. I'll make no difference, I'll get the same answer, but I'll need to work out the gradient first of all. What's the gradient of the line a, b? Even if I was doing it the first way, I'd have to get the gradient first. And the gradient comes from the distance up, over the distance along with a line. The slope of a line really means how much do you climb up for every step along. So if you don't step along one, you'd have to divide by how far you've stepped along to find out how much you climb for every one step along. And how will you get the distance up here? Well, it'll be a difference in the coordinates. Now, I've written this first of all. I'll put it in inverted commas. So I will write, I could write y2 minus y1, although strictly speaking, it's really c2 minus c1. But there's a way around that, over x2 minus x1, because that's what you've learned. You could put it in inverted commas, meaning in that form, but not actually those letters. There's no mark for stating that anyway. I don't usually bother with y2 minus y1. I usually write delta y, meaning the difference, capital D in the Greek alphabet, the difference in y. Ooh. So, what have we got? 500 take away 200 for the difference in the y-ish coordinates. 25 take away 5 for the difference in the x-ish, the horizontal coordinates. So, 500 take away 200 is 300. 300 over 20, knock out the 10s, 15. The gradient of that line is 15. Now, you'd have thought that would have been the first mark, but apparently the first mark just comes from getting 300 over 20, just for subtracting that, because you don't have to write any of this down. Distance up, it's gone up 300. Distance along, it's gone along 20. 300 over 20, that's the first mark. Next mark's going to be substituting it into this. So you've got y minus, now you've got to choose a point to use. Use the one with the smaller numbers, 5 and 200. y minus, but the y coordinate y minus the 200 is the gradient. 15, I've already written this up here, so that's why I've not written it again, times x minus the x-coordinate. Having done that, gets you the second mark. And then tidying it all up, and here, I think I'll just, in advance, change that into, the y was actually the c, and the x was actually the f. But I think you still get the mark, even if you just had it still in the y form. So the final answer would be, I've got C equals 15F minus 75 plus, uh, plus 200. So C would be 15F plus 125. And that's the third mark. And you have to have the C and the F in. And if you wrote Y equals 15X plus 125, that wouldn't get the last mark. You'd have to change those names to the proper names on the axis.
No, if you did it this way, I'll put that in inverted commas because I know the y and the x aren't really appropriate. If I've done it this way, I've already worked out the gradient of AB was 15, and then I put it into this, I've got y equals 15x plus c. Because that c is a bit of a nuisance because it clashes with that c. But it's not so bad just now. So how could you find this constant at the end? Well, you've got an equation. There are three letters in it. You can only find one of them if you know the other two. And where you see these x's and y's, they'll stand for coordinates. So pick a point. Pick the point 5, 200. If you substitute that into this, you'll have a number equals number, number, all be number, 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 and a 1c. So you can work out c. So y is 200. x is 5. It's quite handy to quite often do that for substitution instead of just putting times. Plus c. Which means that c will be the 200. Take away 5 fifteens. Take away 75. So that c will be 125. If you were doing it this way, of course, that gradient was still the first mark. What remember before that, the unsimplified form of it. That You'd have thought that would have been the second mark, but it's not. The second mark would just have been from the substitution. I suppose because the final mark is just to substitute it all into that. But remember to change everything. What was M? That was 15. What was X? That was F. What was the number at the end? That was 125. What was it all called up the way? That was C. Then that gives you the final mark. I would say use the equations the appropriate way. Go for y equals mx plus c if you know where it cuts the vertical axis. Go for y minus b equals mx minus a if you don't know where it cuts the vertical axis. But obviously, both methods, both starting points, give you the same result. Part B then. A super deluxe sandwich contains 40 grams of fat. F was for fat and grams. Use your answer to part A. Now, this is only one mark. You have to use the answer you obtained in part A. Don't try and use this graph. Notice the graph's no use to you anyway, because the point B was just at 25 grams of fat. So 45 is way off the line. So it's a calculation using the equation you got. It's only one mark. So that means the number of calories will be 15 times, and it said it was 40 grams. No calculator, well, that's not much in the way of working. 4 fifteens are 60, so that's 600 plus it, I'll put it down. 600 plus 125, which is 725. I may as well put those units in that it said calories. Now, even though you could have done that in your head, Here's another of the cases where if you just done that in your head and put 725 down without any working, you'd have got no marks instead of the one mark you do get if you quite clearly show your working leading up to it. I think the lesson here with these marking schemes is you should always show your working, even though sometimes it might give you the marks without the working.